Good morning. Today is Friday, April 12th, 2024. I heard this story from Rabbi Biederman. There's a rabbi who lives in B'nai Brak. He's a great authority in Jewish law. And every Friday, he would travel from his home in B'nai Brak to Kiryat Sefer, a nearby place. And he had a job that for several hours he would be available to answer any questions on Jewish law. He was in an office, people would come or they would call, and he was available. So every Friday he would travel from Bnei Brak to Kiryat Sefer, and he would travel by taxi. And normally he would bring a, a volume of the Talmud or some other work of Torah to be able to study while he was in the taxi going back and forth. But one time it happened that the taxi that picked him up, the taxi driver, was listening to a shear on the radio. As you may know, in Israel, especially on Friday, there are a number of Torah classes that are taught over the radio. Other days also, but Friday is well known for it. And the driver, the taxi driver, was listening very attentively to this Torah class and was... um, benefiting from from listening to it. And so the rabbi in the back seat, normally he would open up his own sefer, but this rabbi decided he was going to listen in as well to the to the to the shear on the radio. Now, in this shear on the radio, there was a story that was told about Rabbi Biederman's grandfather. I can't tell you if that's the reason he told the story, because it's about his grandfather. It's still a great story, but his grandfather's name was Rabbi Moshe Mordechai Lelever, a great scholar who lived a number of years ago. Rabbi Moshe Mordechai Lelever, Rabbi Biederman's grandfather. And here's the story that happened many years ago, probably 50, 60, maybe 70 years ago. Story goes like this. Many years ago, on a Friday night, Rav Moshe Mordechai and his family had a number of guests in their home for Shabbos. And a Jew walked in. Now later, this Jew said that Rabbi Moshe Mordechai saved his life. Okay, but here's the story. A Jew walked in, went over to Rav Moshe Mordechai. Rav Moshe Mordechai whispered something in his ear. And the man left right away. Nobody knew what was happening. So one of the guests who was watching this ran out after this man. What did the rabbi say to you? What did Ramosha Mordechai say to you? So this man told him the following story. He said, the situation at home between my wife and I, it's very tense. We have major, major shalom bias problems. We're fighting all the time between husband and wife. It's really, it's a terrible situation. And one of the main problems that we have is that every Friday we have the same argument. We argue about where to place the Shabbos lights. I want to place them on the side like a buffet on the side of the dining room, and my wife wants to put them on the table, on the dining room table. So every Friday, this man says, he would set up the Shabbos candles and put them on the side, and then he would go to shul. And then when he came home from shul, he would see that his wife had moved the candles and lit them on the table, and he would become very, very angry. And she would become angry. And the whole Shabbos, they would be arguing and fighting. It was a terrible, terrible situation. Finally, one Friday, this man warned his wife. And he said, when I come home from Shul tonight, if the candles are on the table, that's it. I'm leaving you right then, and I'm never coming back. He leaves for shul, he comes home from shul, 
He sees the candles are on the table and he storms out of the house, slammed the door behind him, left his wife, several young children, and he ran away. Okay, so now he's walking around. It's Friday night at Shabbos. He's alone. He has nowhere to go. And he ends up at the home of Ramosha Mordechai Lelov, Lelover. He walked in. Ramosha Mordechai signaled to him to come over to him and whispered in his ear. And what Ramosha Mordechai whispered in his ear was, the reason we light Shabbos candles is to help foster Shalom Bayis, so that the home should be lit up and so that people should enjoy each other to create harmony and peace within the home. For the Shabbos candles that are intended to create Shalom Bayis, does it make sense to fight over it? The man left immediately. He returned home. He apologized to his wife and children. He never argued with his wife about this again. And he and his wife were able to live the rest of their lives together with Baruch Hashem, beautiful Shalom Bayis, getting along, doing well together, with peace and harmony in their home. Okay. That's the story that was told over the radio, the rabbi is in the back seat and the rabbi is listening to this story. He's on his way to Kiryat Sefer to answer questions. He gets to Kiryat Sefer and the first question that he is asked is from a young man, newly married, and he asks him the following question. Is it better to light the Shabbos candles on the table or is it better to light the Shabbos candles on the side? So this rabbi who's telling the story to Rabbi Biederman, this rabbi says, normally, I would have just answered what it says in Shulchan Aruch, in the Code of Jewish Law, what Jewish Law says about this. But instead, he answered, I just listened to this story about Rav Moshe Mordechai Lelover, and that's the answer that he gave. Whatever your wife wants to do, don't argue about it. It's intended to create shalom bayis. The story should remind us how important Shalom Bayis is to create harmony in our homes with our spouses, with our children, with our parents, with all the close relationships that we have. And how often we must forego what we want or what we think is right. We should remember and act on that at all times, but especially like tonight when we see the Shabbos candles. I want to add very briefly one second story that I heard from Rabbi Biederman that's particularly appropriate in these days. And this concerns another great rabbi in uh, Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem. His name was Rabbi Shimshon Aaron Polanski. Rabbi Polanski was a highly regarded scholar. He was the head of a yeshiva in Yerushalayim. And in his yeshiva... It was filled with young men, mostly newly married, who were studying Torah full-time. It was a few days before Pesach, and Rabbi Polanski came into the base medrash where everyone was studying, and he clapped on the table, and he said, please listen, I have an announcement. He announced that he had a list of local women who were making Pesach by themselves, And they needed some help with the basic tasks. They weren't able to get it done. These poor women, they were by themselves. Is there anyone here who would be willing to give up a little bit of their Torah learning in order to help out these needy women? Everyone in the base medrash stood up, raised their hands. Of course, of course, what an important mitzvah to help a woman in need to help her prepare for Pesach. Everyone said, of course, I will give some time and I will help. So Polanski said, 
in order not to embarrass anyone, I have written the names and the addresses on little pieces of paper. So if you would please come line up <clears throat> and I'll give you a piece of paper so you will know the name and address of where to go, but it won't be public, so it won't be embarrassing to anybody else. They all lined up, and as they approached, Rabbi Polanski gave each one a piece of paper with their own wife's name and address on the paper. and a very clear message about what their role should be on the days leading to Pesach. My friends, I wish you a great Shabbos and a calm and easy and help-filled time preparing for Pesach. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.